Hello, metal, uh, metal strip on reels. So I've got two reels of metal here. This is a 10 meter reel of nickel plated steel. And this is a five meter reel of pure nickel metal strip. Now the pure nickel five meters was twice the price, about six pounds than the 10 meters of nickel plated steel. So nickel plated steel is certainly a lot cheaper. So I've cut a couple of lengths of these two metal strips. Um, now what if I get these mixed up and I don't know which is which? Can I use a magnet to work it out? No, because nickel is attracted to a magnet and nickel plated steel is also attracted to a magnet. So no, I can't tell them apart with a magnet, which is a nuisance. Now, the last time I looked at this um, strip, a couple of commenters said the only way to tell the difference is to leave them outside for a few days and see which one goes rusty. Well, that's not very practical. One thing I have noticed actually when using the magnet is the steel is kind of springy, makes a springy noise. The nickel is a bit softer, a bit more ductile and doesn't make quite such a resonant springy noise. But I don't think that's enough to reliably tell them apart. Uh, the other thing is that the steel is slightly, I was going to use my fingernail, but I think I'll use this cocktail stick, slightly less susceptible to impressions. I don't know whether you can see those. On the nickel, it's actually quite susceptible to impressions. I think it's a bit more ductile is the word. This is kind of springy and this is a bit softer, but I don't think that's a reliable way to tell them apart. No, probably the best way to do it is simply to write on them nickel and this one is Fe plus C, FEC, which is obviously iron and carbon and that's what steel is a mixture of, an alloy of. But I should probably add here that this is also got an I in it because of course it's nickel plated steel. So I went for the eight millimeter wide um, strips of these metals because this is an 18650 end holder and you can see that eight mil fits with a nice little bit of wiggle into these strip slots. Um, now for the bigger cells of course that gap is larger so I wanted to go for the biggest strip I could that would be kind of universal and fit on 18650s and uh, above size cells. Now why would you buy pure nickel strips rather than nickel plated steel? Because it's a lot more expensive uh, to get pure nickel strip. Well the answer of course is resistance, resistivity. Uh, nickel has a lower resistivity than nickel plated steel. Wikipedia article on electrical resistivity and conductivity and it's all about length of the metal, um, cross-sectional area of the metal and of course uh, this. Is that rho? I believe that's rho. Brett said it was rho uh, which is resistivity of different metals and I've got a table here and we've got, well silver's the best, copper is uh, the second best, much more abundant than silver, of course, uh, although increasingly less so perhaps these days. Aluminium's not bad at 2.65 times 10 to the minus 8. But nickel is here, essentially it's 7 times 10 to the minus 8. And where's steel? Well, there's carbon steel, 14 times 10 to the minus 8. We've got grain-oriented electrical steel. Now, I understand that that's the, the sort of... Um, laminated steel strips that they use in transformers and electric motors that sort of thing much higher and stainless steel is higher still um, now i don't know which steel i've got but let's assume it's uh, this carbon steel 1010 so we're looking at nickel having uh, seven times 10 to the minus eight there and steel being well about 14 times 10 to the minus eight so half the resistance for pure nickel is it though? Is it half the resistance of nickel plated steel? Is nickel half the resistance? Um, well, let's find out. I've got this thing, which is a YR1035 Plus. I bought this on AliExpress. It's 
20 something dollars. Um, it comes with this probe set. And it's interesting because this is a four wire measurement. So we've got a connector. You can get two variants of this actually. One has a USB connector, but I thought it was worth a couple of extra dollars to get the one with the nice connector. So that's got a nice positive uh, connecting probe connector. And then these are four wire probes right down to the very tips. So you've actually got two spring loaded pogo pins in each probe. So it does a true four wire measurement. Now this is actually intended for measuring the internal resistance of uh, cells. So here are some 18650 sodium ion cells and uh, once again if I can pick that up which I can't uh, you can see that that nickel strip fits quite nicely in the little uh, gaps in there so that's why I got eight mil um, so yes I can use this device let's switch it on uh, lots of Chinese stuff and then you get a milli ohms on the top row and volts on the bottom row so let's measure one of these cells uh, I'll put the positive probe on the positive yeah it's slightly tricky especially because there's limited width of cable here right let's push that in push that in what have we got oh, it's just not making a good tone contact one second Okay, let's try again with that a bit more visible. What have we got? 16.9, so about 17 milliohms for that cell. 3.55, 3.56 volts. So 17 milliohms. And now I've got some 26 650s. Um, let's do this one. This should be lower because it's a bigger cell. And we've got, oh, it's the, it's the same or slightly higher, 17.25 milliohms, uh, 2.56 volts. Let's get a bigger cell. Okay, big sodium ion cell. I've got to get the two probes on here. Let's put those two up there. I think this is the negative end. And that is, oh yes, 0.8 milliohms, uh, 3.15 volts. So yes, this device is intended to measure the internal resistance and voltage of um, battery cells. But you can also, you'll get a zero voltage of course, you can also measure the resistance of just a piece of metal. So let's go for 0.1 meters of pure nickel. So I'm going to do it over a 10 centimeter distance and that's 9.6 milliohms. Now a 10 centimeter strip of nickel plated steel and that this is supposed to light up when you first touch them. Yeah. Um, that's 15 milliohms. So that's interesting. The pure nickel is just under 10 milliohms. The nickel plated steel is just under 15 milliohms. That is not a two to one ratio. So why is that not a two to one ratio? Which one of those Wikipedia entries is wrong? Now, I very much doubt that Wikipedia is wrong, of course. So what could be happening here? Um, the pure nickel may not be 100% pure. It may be 90 something percent pure nickel. It may be alloyed with other metals. The other thing is that the nickel plated steel is plated with nickel. Um, now, how thick would that plating be? The strip itself is 0.1 millimeters thick. But how thick is the nickel plating and could it have um, an influence bringing down the resistance of this strip of metal. Really what we need to do is do the calculations to see what the resistance of these two strips should be. Uh, so here we are, resistivity is resistance in ohms 
times area over length. Now that will all be in meters. Um, correspondingly, resistance will be uh, rho, if that is indeed rho, length over area. So the resistance in ohms should be resistivity times length over area. Let's work it out. Right, let's do nickel first. So R equals resistivity. Now that was 7, uh, 10 to the minus 8. Um, length on the top. Now I'm using 0 0.1 of a meter. So that's 10 to the minus 1 over... Um, so the area is the, the width, which is 8 millimeters, so 10 to the minus 3, times the thickness, which is 0 0.1 millimeters. So that's 0 0.1 times 10 to the minus 3, which is 10 to the minus 4. I think that's right. 7 over 8, uh, 10 to the minus 9 there, 10 to the minus 7. Um, well, that's 7 over 8, 10 to the minus 2, isn't it? Uh, so 7 over 8 is a little bit less than 1 um, times 10, that would be. So a bit less than 10 milli ohms for nickel plated, uh, for the pure nickel. Now, the other one nickel plated steel would be 14 over 8 uh, with all the same numbers isn't it I think because the resistivity is 14 10 to the minus 8 and the uh, length and area which is the width of the strip and the thickness are all the same so yeah that would be right I've worked it out properly um, the number should be nickel 8.75 milli ohms for my 0.1 meter strip and steel according to wikipedia's um, list of uh, resistivities should be 17.8 or 17.9 milli ohms so let's just measure them again okay nickel should be 8.75 milli ohms for 10 centimeter length of metal and we have slightly more resistance than that so the nickel's not as good as it should be 9.6 the nickel plated steel should be 17.9 and it's actually 14 come on light up that's it 14.8 so the nickel plated steel is actually better than the resistivity of carbon steel um, as listed and I can only assume that it's because well either it's a bit thicker than 0.1 millimeters because it's definitely eight millimeters wide um, or it's the nickel plating which slightly lowers the resistance of um, the strip let me write down the actual measured results so they were 9.8 and 14.8 okay so according to wikipedia and the uh, length and area calculations this nickel strip should be 8.75 milli ohms it's actually 9.8 milli ohms so it's not quite as good as you'd expect from pure nickel possibly because this isn't actually completely pure it's probably pretty good um, the nickel plated steel strip should be 17.9 milli ohms it's actually a lot lower it's 14.8 now is that because it's coated in nickel or is this a better grade of steel than the carbon steel which i think was marked 1010 i don't know what that means um, the carbon steel listed in the wikipedia article the point is that we end up with one only being about 50 percent better than the other so all those people in my video where i was doing uh, spot welding who were saying oh you can't use uh nickel plated steel it's rubbish it goes rusty and all that sort of stuff um pure nickel is not massively better than nickel plated steel so there we are um pure nickel strip nickel plated steel strip uh, pure nickel is four times the price 
of nickel-plated steel and yet it's not even half the resistance. Um, I'll put links to uh, these two purchases in the description. I also put a link to this. Um, I bought this, it's not a freebie. And it has got me thinking, do you remember the supercapacitor uh, spot welder which I bought, um, which said, it is forbidden to spot weld pure nickel sheet and aluminium and copper and all that sort of stuff. Well, from the results of this, I reckon that the difference between nickel plated steel sheet and pure nickel sheet is so not that great that this thing would probably survive uh, spot welding pure nickel sheet, as long as it's the fairly thin stuff, this 0.1. I mean, this actually says it can um, weld up to 0.3 millimeters, I think. Yeah, there we are, spot welding of 0.3 millimeter nickel plated steel uh, sheet requires charging to 5.4 volts. You do have to get the caps up to a higher voltage to do the 0.3 millimeter. Um, but 0.1, I reckon this device would be perfectly happy with pure nickel. I might experiment with it. Okay, that's it for this video. Cheerio.